Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, I think that uh, we've had so far this evening two very distinct um, talks, the first from a medical point of view, the other from a surgical point of view. And what I think is very important is that in this particular area, perhaps the medical doctors and the surgical doctors are really on the same page as far as the natural uh, workup treatment uh, and uh, goals that have been outlined for treating this disease. Uh, when medicine fails, we have a surgical backup and a very good surgical backup. I recently had a 35-year-old uh, patient who worked as a security guard who came to me complaining of reflux. This was about six months ago. We tried him on some Pepsid, one of the first or second stage treatments with lifestyle modifications. We told him not to have too much caffeine, don't drink alcohol, don't smoke, put the heavier bed up. And he tried a number of these things, but he continued to have a great discomfort from heartburn. Um, after that, we went to stage 2B, and we added in the proton pump inhibitors. I put this gentleman on Prilosec. First, he was on $3 a day of Prilosec. Then he was on $6 a day of Prilosec. And then, for good measure, he threw in a couple bucks worth of Zantac at bedtime and antacids. And, uh, Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. He came to me one day and said, look, you know, you're breaking the bank. Uh, I'm getting nasty layers from my HMO, and uh, I'm still having reflux. At which point, as Dr. Prosha alluded, we went on to see what's going on. Why is he on so much medicine and still having problems? And we did that little soft, flexible, and comfortable tube in the nose. And we found that despite all of our medicine, he was still having significant drops in pH every time he hit the little recording button saying, I'm having heartburn. And uh, from that point, we went on to the second little flexible, comfortable tube in the nose, did a manometry, and found out that that sphincter, that point between the esophagus and the stomach, was very loose. And despite our medications, it was so loose that gastric contents would freely reflux into his esophagus. At that point, he opted to have a Nissen fundification done. It was done about three months ago, and he hasn't had to take a pill in three months, and he feels great. In fact, a surgeon looked at him uh, after the, the surgery for one visit, said, that's it, don't have to see you again, and he's happy as a clam. Now, not all patients have to go to fundification. Some do quite well with their medications, and it's up to the doctor and the patient on an individual basis to determine whether or not one stays on long-term chronic therapy with medications, whether that's the right approach, whether someone needs, requires, or should have the gold standard, which of course is a Nissen fund application, in which case we get people like Dr. Wolken involved. At this point, I believe we may have some cars with questions, and I'm going to take a peek at them for a moment and see uh, what interesting uh, points we can uh, bring up and what pearls of wisdom Dr. Posh and uh, Wolken will share with us. Darn it, Vito, I'm a doctor, not an engineer. In the meantime, I can play with the laser on you, Vito. Okay, here's, a, uh, here's an interesting one that actually we were talking a little bit about uh, before the three of us. Uh, one of our audience members writes, uh, my three and a half year old son was diagnosed with Barrett's esophagus. What are the chances that if I have another child, he or she may have Barrett's? And can you refer me to literature as about young children with Barrett's? Vito, why don't you take first crack at this one? I'm not sure of the malignancy risk of Barrett's. That's, that's acquired at a very early age. Uh, there is a, a syndrome of, a, of a congenital Barrett's called inlet patch, 
which is a which is you can be born with a, a patch of Barrett's esophagus in the upper part of the esophagus. We see this on endoscopy not infrequently. I've never seen a case of uh, adenocarcinoma in an inlet patch esophagus, and I believe the risks are described as very low for that Barrett's. Besides that, I can't really comment much on the pediatric population.